Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Try to be very alert to what's happening with the breath and what's happening with the mind. Know when the breath is coming in, know when it's going out. Know when the mind is coming in and going out. In other words, when the mind wanders off, bring it right back. If you catch it, bring it right back again. Try to be as quick as possible in catching the mind. Because this ability to look after your own mind is really important. This is your refuge. Just now we took refuge in the Buddha and the Dhamma and the Sangha. But that means is we take them as our examples. The Buddha found a refuge within himself. The Dharma is the means that he taught for finding refuge. And then the Sangha people who took the Buddha's teachings and found refuge within themselves as well. And then they become refuges for the rest of us. In other words, a good example. This is how true happiness is found. And it's important we keep that example in mind because there's so many other bad examples around us. How you can go about finding happiness, trying to get as much wealth as you can, trying to get as much power as you can, as much sensual enjoyment, all kinds of things. People show by their example their ideas of where true happiness is, lies and how it's going to be found. And sometimes those examples are very powerful. So you have to remind yourself, okay, we've got a better example. We've got the example of the Buddha, we've got the example of all of his noble disciples. Back when John Sawat was still alive and he after he'd had a car accident, he'd had some brain damage. And he had some difficulty in, in, in teaching, but still he wanted to get the basic points across. And this is the theme that he talked about more often than anything else at that point, was taking refuge. Make sure you have the right refuge in your heart. Take the right example for how you find happiness. And then you don't just look at them as an example, but you actually follow the example. An important part of the Buddha's example was that he looked very carefully at what he was doing and the results he was getting. In other words, he developed this quality of alertness to see, well, what's actually going on? We read about things, this should be good and that should be good. But he said, well, actually look at it while you're doing it. Look at the results that you have, that you gain afterwards. Are the results as good as you thought they might be? If not, there's something wrong with what you did. Go back and look at that again. In this way of keeping watch over his mind, that he then brought this into his his meditation as well. As you keep watch over the mind, it's staying with the breath. When it moves around, okay, is it causing any stress? The way it's focused, is it causing any stress? The way it moves, is that more stressful or less? You try to notice these things, and then when you notice them, you learn. And once you've learned, then you try to remember. That's what mindfulness is. This is why mindfulness and alertness go together. You watch what's happening, and then you learn and you remember that. And then you test it again. And things get more and more refined. This combination of mindfulness and alertness, that's where your real refuge is on the path. Ulti your ultimate refuge, of course, is when you find total happiness. It doesn't depend on any conditions at all. That's the one thing that's really safe. So in the meantime, before you get to that point, you have to be heedful, you have to be alert. And this is your protection. So develop this quality of alertness as much as you can as you're watching the breath, as you're watching the mind as you go through the day. This quality of alertness, alertness isn't for use just while you're sitting here with your eyes closed. You want to do it when your eyes are open, walking around, noticing how your mind goes flowing out to different things and seeing, okay, there's stress in there. There's going to be problems in there if you don't learn how to control that. So you learn how to monitor what's going on. Step back and watch. And that's going to be your protection as you go along the path. As you meet with aging, illness, and death, that's going to be your protection as well. Because at that point, your worst enemy is not the pain in the body, it's the sense of desperation in the mind. It tries to grab hold of this, grab hold of that, doesn't see anything you can grab hold of. You've got to remind yourself, okay, you've got this awareness here in the present moment. Stay with that. You've got your alertness. Stay with that. Think about only things that are going to be helpful at that point. Which means that you've got to constantly keep watch on what's going on. This is why we meditate, is to develop this quality. We practice this quality so that when the time comes when the mind really gets out of control, we'll be able to bring it under control. Like a person who's able to take a wild horse and tame it. It's this quality of alertness combined with mindfulness. That's the, those are the tamers of the mind. Those are your protectors. Those are the things that are going to take you to refuge and provide you with a temporary refuge along the way and bring you to an ultimate refuge when you reach the goal. So be very careful to develop these qualities as much as you can, because they'll help you all along the way.